Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, 2021 is now over and I just want to do um, a quick um, look back at the books I've read over the past year um, see if there's any that I can recommend for you and sort of give not necessarily a top 10 but you know this is the books I've read and ones that I would like to recommend so we could call it a book recommendation. Um, I would like first to begin with the autobiography of Malcolm X. Now, um, I read the audio book, uh, which was done by Lawrence Fishburne, uh, some of you might know from The Matrix, and uh, it was it was unbelievable. Um, this book described a, a period of time that was quite a long while ago, now you're talking, it starts pre-World War II and then goes on obviously until the 60s. And, you know, we always hear back how racist America used to be and, you know, uh, we, we assume that it's different now, obviously, over the past few years, what's happened with George Floyd and, um, <clears throat> you know, other instances of, of police brutality, things like that. And, and you realise, wow, not much has changed. And, and Malcolm X was a man uh, well ahead of his time in, in many respects. And um, this book just, I, I would recommend it not just to people of colour or, you know, people who live in America. I would recommend it to, and, and not just Muslims, I would recommend it to anyone, you know, it's, not only is it interesting, it's also highly valuable about, you know, society and how things, yes, they've changed slightly, but not enough. And as I said, I would recommend everyone read that. Um, moving on to the next book. This is um, The Productive Muslim by um, Mohammed Faris, um, Where Faith Meets Productivity. And this was another book I read as an audiobook, hence why I've only got it as a picture. Um, I've spent 2021 reading many books on um, you know time management, productivity, how to achieve more self-motivation, as you'll see later on. And this was a fantastic addition to um, that line of thinking. And I, I believe that many people, again, it doesn't have to strictly be Muslims, would benefit from this book. Um, <coughs> it's it's not it's not an expensive book. It's highly affordable. I believe. Well, I use my credit from Audible, so it was only seven pounds. I believe. Um, and it's it's one that sort of gives you a kick up the backside on you know getting getting back in the uh, strictness of things and, and cracking on with that. Um, moving on to an actual physical book now, if I can find it. And these books obviously didn't all come out in twenty twenty one. I'm just reviewing the books I've read in twenty twenty one. This book is the legislated types of jihad and the deviation of the extremists by Saleh ibn Fozan al Fozan. Um, it's <coughs> it's a fantastic book that does a um, a great job of you know showing Muslims who who may not be sure who may be confused about what our role is um, in the world in 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 terms of we hear this word jihad a lot these days in in um, in Western media and you know across the globe we've you know the 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 time of ISIS isn't, you know, out of memory yet. It was within 10 years. And um, before that, Al-Qaeda and um, the Taliban to a lesser extent. And, and it's basically, you know, what does Islam say about these things? And it, it's portrayed in a, in a in a great way that's very understandable and shows us, especially um, post-Caliphate, how we should sort of act um, <coughs> In the, in the world these days, you know, and sort of teaches us that we shouldn't just be going around taking the law into our own hands, um, as some people misconstrue. Uh, so again, if if it's something, you know, you personally aren't, sh aren't sure about in, in terms of, uh, you know, jihad and, and what your um, thoughts should be and how you should act, I would highly recommend this book. Um, Next one, uh, a recent read that I've just read. This is um, Sustenance of the Soul by um, Abu Zaid al-Balqi. This is one of my favorite looking um, books. Now, <coughs> this was a book that I, I think I seen a rec recommendation on Twitter regarding. Um, it's basically sort of looks into medicine, uh, mental health, uh, psychology. So anyone interested in psychology, highly recommended. And uh, what I liked about this book it sort of showed me that even though 
I mean, this book is 1,200 years old, even, even though <laughs> uh, humanity has moved on in terms of technology and um, society, we are still very similar to how we were back then, almost exactly the same, really. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's a book that's got some great bits in there and, again, highly recommended. Um, moving on, another book for self-help. Um, Disciplining the Soul by Ibn al Josi, Rahim Allah, died in the year 597 after Hijrah. Um, a fantastic book that, similar to The Productive Muslim, is sort of a kick up the backside. If I recall correctly, was this the book he did for his son? It might be. I've read a few of his books recently. Um, but all, all of his books were basically, you know, trying to um, just improve people's. Um, you know, love for Islam and, you know, make sure that they, they're using their time correctly and working hard. And it was a book I massively benefited from. I, you know, it's not a it's not a large book. It's just over 100 pages. Um, and as the blurb says, uh, it, it discusses spiritual diseases, envy, greed, um, sexual desire, arrogance, and sort of how to deal with these and how to sort of, you know, um, develop the inner self, as it were. Um, Next book, this is an, a, an absolute must um, for every Muslim, I believe. It's um, Al Aqira al Tahawiya um, by Imam Abu Jafar al Tahawi, uh, Rahimullah, a famous scholar from uh, I think the 300s um, after Hijrah, so uh, the 900s um, common era. Now, this is one of the earliest um, books on Aqidah we have, and they they usually it usually always comes with commentary. Um, I believe this book is a um, sort of like a a, a matridi uh, commentary, and I've actually done an audio book which is on my YouTube uh, that you should be able to find, which is just the audio book of actual Akida Tahawiya with no commentary from uh, anyone else, so that you can get a, a pure reading of of what he said. In in case you don't want the matridi version or you know. Um, you don't want to see a, like a, a fairy version so uh, that that is there on my page which I'll try and see if I can put it in the uh, description there and yeah again a great book uh, it's it's not too big it's actually a very very short book I think I read it in less than an hour um, and it just sort of teaches you exactly what our beliefs are in Islam and um, it, it's, it's more of a foundational one you know if you if you want to um, learn more than these books like Rakida Wasatiya and um, many others out there that you could go into afterwards but for a starting book it's definitely um, with a teacher one of the best books I would recommend <coughs> moving on we have so these three books are sort of a, a three in one sort of thing so um, How to Hide an Empire by Daniel Im Imerwer her I don't know that name um, but there's the there's the picture of it anyway and this is basically about how, it's a history of the greater United States and how, how they sort of developed from the, the War of Independence against the, the British into modern day and sort of, you know, kind of like all the backstabbing they did to get there and um, destroying other countries and stealing resources um, to, to modern day to becoming the global superpower. And <coughs> again, it, you know, th this is important things we need to know because uh, as Muslims, I'm assuming you're a Muslim watching this, um, these are periods of times where the decline of the Islamic Empire has been the worst it's ever been. Uh, you know, worse than the Mongol invasion, worse than the Crusades. Uh, you know, from the 1900s, or well, even 1800s onwards, it's, it's been awful uh, for, the, for the Muslim Ummah. And this book sort of shows, you know, some, some, of, the, um, some of the things that the, the USA did to um, facilitate that. And uh, that's why I believe it leads in quite closely to the next book, um, The New Confessions of an Economic Hitman, which by John Perkins, which is uh, another fantastic book. I, this was an audio book again I listened to. <coughs> um, I think that might have been free for me on Audible, actually. And this book sort of shows how... So... How to Hide an Empire shows, it tells you what happened and how to hide an empire, uh, and sorry, the new confessions of the economic hitman tells you uh, how <laughs> how that happened and, and sort of the, the things that went on in the background. More in modern day, I think uh, 70s and 80s um, sort of 
where it's based mainly and sort of how people would um in the usa well as it says economic hitmen they were hitmen economically they they could uh, destroy countries financially they could um facilitate um assassinations if certain uh, governments weren't playing ball they, there was there was a lot that happened in order to keep the usa up here and everyone else not up here you know um globalization uh, illuminati new world order whatever you want to call it um the new confessions of an economic hitman shows how all that happened which is why i think they go very well together <coughs> and they also sort of lead on to this next book which i just finished reading today called stealth war by robert spaulding who is a um retired u.s air force um member and it's quite it's quite funny actually this book is a it's almost like a an american man's fear of the future on how he believes china are now becoming the global superpower if if not already in the next 10 15 20 years and sort of how do you know the way they're going about it is incorrect and how do you know they've got um they've got the worst prepared for us um now don't get me wrong i'm not necessarily um big enough china um but i mean it's for any of you who know any music the who uh, there's a lyric in one of their songs um say hello to the new boss same as the old boss now um this this american who wrote this book is just scared that uh, china are gonna come and take their um job as global superpower and put their swing on it um if you want to call it communism or um socialism you can whether or not that that would affect muslims worse than what it is now with capitalism who knows we, we don't know um whether or not it's hinting at a future war between the usa and china we don't know but again um for a muslim to sort of you know keep up to date with modern um ongoings between the these superpowers do you know these three books together i think are, are fantastic to read um and moving on to my last two books now these two books um i can't praise them highly enough uh the first one um the patience of our pious predecessors in seeking knowledge L lovely book um <coughs> just uh, 150 pages and it basically tells us what our scholars have done for us how we have such rich history in terms of um what we've achieved how our religion has stayed so strict and similar to um the time of the prophet Salim and the, the sahaba um may god be pleased with them and i think it's essential not just i mean it is it is i suppose for um for students of knowledge sort of aimed towards students of knowledge mainly but we should all be students of knowledge to some extent and uh, you know i wouldn't classify myself as um a student of knowledge i i like to learn but this book as i said um helps me in terms of productivity uh, a massive amount um it's by um sheikh abdul fatah um abu Ghudda, rahimallah who is quite a modern scholar he only died i think uh, 30 years ago maybe not even that and uh, book number one is also written by him um the value of time only a small book i think 80 pages um now this i, I didn't think a book could be better than uh, the patience of the pious predecessors in seeking knowledge but the value of time for me personally um, did top that now um since reading this book in, in terms of my time management i've never witnessed anything like it i i achieved so much more. it feels like i now have 35 hours in a day rather than 24 because of this book um again probably more of a, a student of knowledge sort of um offensive but again i believe everybody should should be trying to to read this book because the benefits are just fantastic and you know we could all do with um being more productive and having time management and, and this book does such a good job of that i don't think personally a book has affected me um as much as this since i read the the quran for the first time maybe uh, 14 years ago now i'm not too sure when i first read the quran um now good news is 
These two books I've just mentioned, The Value of Time and the Patience of the Pious Predecessors in Seeking Knowledge, I have actually turned into audiobooks on, on my YouTube channel and uh, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, I believe they're on there as well. <coughs> so if you are interested, it's all free of charge, you don't have to pay, you just listen to them and I promise you, you will benefit. Um, you may benefit more than you even want to uh, <laughs> because I... You know, these certain things I wasn't planning on giving up that these books have sort of forced through. So, alhamdulillah for that. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any books you'd like to recommend, please let me know. And uh, I'll be carrying this on maybe monthly or maybe quarterly uh, through 2022, inshallah. Keep me on your, your du'as. And um, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.